We were a close-knit group of guys. We just had a group of guys that just wanted to play basketball. We always, in the end, got back together. Better tie up the places. Never taking back with steps in the background is big life after death. And here we are 40 years later. We still have that close bond. Mata Christie, I just thought, I, I think that team was unbeatable uh, when, we, when we all came to play. When that, when that whole team came to play, we were just unbeatable. You know, we, we would have an answer for every problem. That, and and I, it's very rarely that you play on a team like that. I stepped foot at Monte Cristi as a freshman. It, it just was a, a really wild ride. Everything blew up for me. These kids could really play. Practices was, were much harder than the games, and, 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 it wasn't, and, and it wasn't by accident. It was by design by Coach Gatto. He wanted it that way. They were unselfish. They, they would pass the ball. They, they didn't really care. They, they, they just wanted to win. They didn't care who scored. You learn from a very early age that the best player don't always win. You got to have a team. It takes a team to win. They all play together at early ages. By playing together at an early age, it helped. You know, helped us in the long run. Well, we played in the city championship, LIC versus uh, Ala Stevenson. Everybody had picked Franklin to win. They had Gary Springer, Steve. They had a they had a crew, and we beat them in the semis. Long Island City at that time had so many good ball players. There was a, a run there of like six, seven, seven years that so many good players came out of there. LIC played Monte Cristi, and Vern went against his brother Vic, and. You couldn't tell the difference between them because they were twins. He beat us by about 15. Yeah. That was, it's funny because when we were going to play that game, we didn't talk to each other. <laughs> there was no like, hey, we, we got on that court, it was like, it's a battle. Yeah. There was no love between us then, but afterwards it was like, all right, y'all beat us. Yeah. We couldn't stop Red. <laughs> we just couldn't stop him. Yeah, I mean, he's dunking all on us and looking at him. We just couldn't do nothing with him. DJ was, I think, uh, the one that put us over, made us a championship team. Dwayne was like a man child. He was about 6'6. Six, six. And he was so strong, a great rebounder, a, a good jump shot, but such a powerful player. He could probably play against anybody from 6'6 six, six to 6'10. Six, I mean, even as a freshman, he had a college body at, at, in the ninth grade. He was fearless. Always said what he was going to do, and he went out and did it on the court. There was no question about that. Jack Curran from Archbishop Alloy always said that he thought Dwayne was one of the best players he ever faced. Philip Smith was a tough kid from the projects. No one wanted to guard him. From foul line to foul line, he was so quick. I don't think there's anybody quicker from baseline to baseline with a basketball in his hand. The only one that really would go out to try to stop him was Vern. He could go 100 miles an hour right, 100 miles an hour left. His handle, it was like he had a yo-yo. It caused a lot of disruptions on defense. Phil was fierce. Phil had a temper on him from junior high, high school. He, Phil be ready to fight at the drop of a hat. Greatest point guard I ever had in my life. I mean, and I'm going to say he was better than Doc Rivers. Jeannie was, the, was a character. Gene was the one that uh, 
we take any fear that we had away from it. I mean, we'd go to Michigan, we'd go to D.C., we'd go to Philly, and uh, Gene would be in the locker room cracking jokes. I mean, he just kept the, the atmosphere so loose. Actually, Jeannie and I are from the same block. So we used to play on the on 10th Street together. But a really good, hard working basketball player. But Jeannie was the guy that, that just made you laugh. Gene reminded me uh, like of a Kenny Anderson. A lefty, great handle, good shooter, a penetrator. He was a good ball player. He just made everything fun. He just made playing basketball, just going out there and having fun no matter what stage he was on. It'd be a championship game and Gene would be, you know, cracking jokes about the other players' sneakers or something like that, you know. When you talk about Queensbridge and the guy who really made it to the top, you, I think you would have to talk about Vern Fleming. My first impression of Vern and Vic is I met them when I was 11 because we played at St. Rita's together. Vern, Vern was the man. He had a skill set that was really tough to match. And I guess basketball was a gateway for them to get out. You got to see a different um, side of them. And then Vern, so smooth, 6'5" point guard. Vern he just constantly moves without the ball. He was like poetry in motion. It was Vern that was magically losing his man and getting open and I mean, making me like I'm a great passer. Could penetrate, rebound. He's like some of those players that you watch and you just say, I love the way he moves. It's just a great all-around player. Well, me and Vic played high school together. We were beating people up on the regular. Yeah. Vic worked hard. And in my opinion, I believe Vic was a pro. He just didn't get the opportunity. I'm on the court playing and Ronnie comes over and said he has next. So um, Ronnie goes get his five guys and they come back to the block and my team won. So we started playing um, and it was very competitive. And then after we finished playing, Ronnie says to me, um, St. Rita's is having tryouts tomorrow and I'll come get you. And, and I told him, I was like, you got to ask my mom. When Ronnie was coming up and DJ would come up, they were a little bit young with us, but you know, they were just as good. There was no question they were just as good. Ronnie recruited the whole team. He got everybody together. Those two were, I mean, there was times we had senior games and we was like, look, let's go find DJ and Ronnie. We need them. Ronnie was nothing but laughter. Ronnie will, Ronnie will have, I'll tell you, Ronnie will have you, your, your sides hurting for hours. And Ronnie was always the one that would come up with the ideas. Oh, Ronnie got, the, oh, Ronnie got an idea uh, how we can win and how we could do this. But Ronnie always had the ideas. It was really, it was, it was hard for a lot of us when he passed. It was, it was, it was, um, it, wow. Mm. That was tough. That was tough. We were close. We, we were close. After junior high, that's when I met Tony Ray Bruin. One day he comes to me and says, you should think about coming to Monte Cristi. And I was like, varsity in, in high school? I said, I'm not right. You know, I'm telling myself this. And he's like, no. Red could change a game. He can jump out the gym. He had a 42 inch vertical jump. And then he took off. A heck of a basketball player. He protected the rim. And at 6'5", he would block a lot of shots. He was someone I looked up to. And the game would change when he would make one of those great dunks. He had confidence in me. Always it was encouraging. I went to Syracuse before because of Tony. I mean, I, can, I knew I can always count on Tony. You know, he, and he took me under his wing, and I had not much respect for what he did for me when I first got to Syracuse. Red had the school record of 43 points, okay? So we're playing Rice High School for the semifinals for the city championship at St. John's University. So we were up big. So I took, I, I took Red out of the game, but I left Vern in, and Vern really had a great game. So I said, Red, you have the school record. I said, uh, Vern is at that stage where he has 43 points. Do you want me to take him out because you have the school record? So he says, no, coach, it doesn't matter. He's such a good player. Let him get the record because if he doesn't get it this year, he'll get it next year when I graduate. I mean, that's the kind of person he was. To be able to play beside him was, was 
any honor I can even imagine. Um, but he was a really, really good, he still is a good guy because Red and I are still in touch. We have a close friendship from the day he came to me when I met him and he came to me and asked me about going to Monte Cristi and here we are 40 years later. We always, in the end, got back together when it was like a, a something going on and, and we had to compete against maybe a, another community. The crew got back together. It's like, okay, let's go do this. We, we just had a, a group of guys that just wanted to play basketball, you know, and it was a, it was a great way for us to keep our friendship together. And to this day, most of us all stay stay friends. Yeah, yeah. We were a close knit group of guys. Um, for us to go from St. Re CYO basketball all the way to high school and you know playing against each other in college. No one ever put anyone down. We always pulled for each other. I tell people all the time, I would never change anything about my upbringing and those who I came in contact with from my neighborhood because the man that you see in front of you is because it took a village to raise me. Unstoppable. I know that you want me to fail, but no, I won't. I know you're waiting. I'll keep fighting until the day I what I do. Till I sit in heaven, I will never stop. Never. I will never stop. Yeah. I can't stop, won't stop like I'm Diddy. Uh. Ten steps ahead so the rest can forget it. And my mind is no limits. If you don't believe, can't flow with it. While they sit on their hands, I go get it. Logic means nothing to a fool. Can't survive if you're breaking all the rules. Yeah, I triple up times two. My homies in the hood, they be like, oh, yeah. Respect is earned, I'm just waiting my turn for that cash put on the ski.